It's time for another Grades Vlog video thing. Welcome back to the Grades Vlogs, or welcome if you're new. If you are new, I'll give you a very quick catch up. Since the very end of September 2020, I have been trying to learn how to play the recorder and how to read sheet music and all that sort of stuff because I couldn't do anything musical and I wanted to be able to do something musical. As part of my learning process, I've been working my way through a set of musical grade exams provided by Trinity College London. The exams I'm taking are in a digital format, so that means I prepare for the exams in my own time, then film a video of my exam entry and send it off to Trinity and wait for the results to come back. This digital exam platform is something that's fairly new from Trinity. Up until they introduced it, you would have to go off and play your exam pieces at an exam centre in front of an exam invigilator. But this digital platform opens up the grade exams to anyone, pretty much anywhere in the world, who just wants to be able to play the pieces in the comfort of their own home and send everything off, well, digitally. Typically, in the UK at least, these music grade exams are something that you might complete while you're at school. Some people start them from a very young age at primary school. Some people might be introduced to them while they're at secondary school. I didn't take my musical grades while I was at school, but one reason why lots of people do take them while they're at school is if they want to take music further, if they want to study at university. But there's absolutely no reason why you can't just use these musical grades as a method for personal musical development, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Now I know a lot of you are really curious about these musical grades and you want to know more, so I'm going to leave a link in the description below that will take you directly to the Trinity College Digital Grades area of their website and all the information that you need will be there. But if you do have any specific questions about the grades, do drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. I just feel I should point out that I am nothing to do with Trinity College London, even though I currently sound like some sort of saleswoman for their exam stuff. Um, I'm not, I'm nothing to do with them, I'm just someone who is going through their digital grades. I'm not recommending them above any of the other exam boards out there, it's just Trinity suited me because they offer this digital method of submitting your exam to them, and personally, at the moment, that's what suits me. Anyway, I'm currently working my way towards my grade three exam. I'm going to be playing three pieces of music for it, which I've chosen from a list given by Trinity. I've already covered in previous videos Tweed Rosamond by Jakob van Eyck and The Dance of the Sugar Fleur the, and The Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy by Tchaikovsky. But for today's piece, my third and final grade three piece, I am going to be playing Rondo. <laughs> Rondo from the Fairy Queen by Henry Purcell. I've been practicing this piece sporadically for a few weeks now. It's just been one of those pieces where if I've had a few minutes spare in a practice session, I've given it a glance over. This piece is accompanied, so I'll be playing it along in my exam to a CD backing track. But you know the drill because of copyright, I can't play along with the CD backing track today, so I'm just going to have to play it just with me. So that was just the opening phrase and like I say I'm at the stage now where I can play all of the notes in the right order, I can play along with the metronome, but now it's time to start playing like a human girl and not like a robot. By that I mean it all needs to be a bit more musical, more pleasant to listen to. At the moment I'm playing quite metronomically, I'm weighting all of the beat accents the same. This is in 3-4 time, so of course the first beat should be strongest. There's a recurring little motif of two notes in this, which is a two beat note to begin with, followed by a crotchet, and I'm noticing that I am weighting that beat 3 with exactly the same amount of weight as beat 1, so I need to correct that. And the first thing I'm going to do is play through making sure that I overemphasize the first beat of every bar. It sounds ridiculous at the moment, I know. 
but this overemphasizing of the beats is a technique I like to do to help me get into the pulse of the music, especially if I'm playing without a backing track. If you have a backing track, it's easier to feel the flow of the music, but when you're playing by yourself, personally, I find it's easy to slip into just playing the notes with the beat of the metronome. Of course, I won't keep playing with the overemphasized beats, but over time I find things naturally begin to settle down and to sound better than they did when I started. One of the other things I want to try is with this little motif, which repeats throughout the piece. That particular phrase at the beginning repeats through twice, and the first time I play it, I think I'm going to play the notes quite separately, but then I'm going to try and make them flow with a different tonguing the second time through. So I might use ru instead of tu, or I might slur them completely. I'll see what sounds best. Something else I would usually do to avoid robotic metronomic playing would be to play around with the tempo a little bit. I might find a point in the music where I want to take my time reaching a high note before galloping back down the other side of it. Particularly at the very end of this piece of music, I would like to slow down in the last phrase. But in this particular case, I can't because the CD backing track doesn't allow it. I have played other pieces for my Trinity exams that have included slowing down at the end of the music in the backing track, but this one doesn't. So I'm just going to have to give that one a miss. One of the other things I can do to combat my metronomical robotic playing is to add some ornaments. There are two trills given in the sheet music, and I want to find a couple of other places to add some of my own as well, because I like trills. The first given trill is over an A note, but we're in B flat major here, so we're not going to trill up to a B, I need to trill up to a B flat. The easiest way to do that is to not land on the regular A fingering, but to remember to play this A instead. And that makes it really easy to trill up to a B flat just by waggling these two fingers. The other given trill starts on a B flat and we need to go up to a C. That one's simple enough, just waggle your index finger around a bit. And I think the place where I can't resist adding one of my own trills is on one of the accidentals. We have an F sharp rather than an F, and it's just so easy to trill to a G from top F sharp. It's just so simple, I can't resist it, and it has to be about my favourite trill to play, it just sounds so nice, and it's pretty much effortless. So I'm going to play the piece all the way through now, fingers crossed, and I'm going to try to bear in mind all of the things we just discussed. So I'm going to be thinking about strong beat emphasis, nice trills, using all the right notes, and as I'm currently not playing along to a CD backing track, I'm free to have a bit of a play around with the tempo if the mood takes me.
from that, things that I think I need to worry about, think about for my exam are hitting the high notes. This piece goes up to a top B flat um, and I definitely feel myself tensing up when I know I need to play some higher notes. Trills, particularly the trill from the B flat to the C, which should be really easy to play. I think I play it quite messily. It's too wide, it's not even, it throws me out of tempo so then for the next half bar of the next bar I'm a bit out of time so I'm not happy with that. Articulation, because I get tense about playing the top notes I really try to help them on their way with some intense two tonguing which makes them sound very detached from each other and that's not necessarily the effect I want all of the time like we said at the start of the video so I need to work on playing top notes reliably with slightly softer tonguing. I think at parts it sounded quite shrill so I would also like to work on producing nice full notes without that shrill edge. I think I'm quite happy with where I'm breathing and my phrasing in this. I mean, my phrasing can always be improved, but I think I'm quite on top of my breath control largely for this piece, so that's a positive. And it's always good to end on a positive. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I make a video every week, mostly about the recorder, but about other instruments as well. With regards to these vlogs, I'm in no hurry to take my grade three exam because I'm still enjoying practicing these pieces and I still have some things to sort out for them. So I don't know when the next vlog about the grades is going to be, but it will come along in the not too distant future. Thank you so much for watching. It would be lovely to see you again next time. Bye!